All right, welcome to the last portion of section 9.1, right triangle, triangle trig. Um, what we're going to talk about in this one is we're going to not now learn how to so fully solve right triangles, so solving for everything. And we're going to do a, a real-world example um, to show you how, how someone might uh, possibly use this in the real life. All right, so this first page is similar, is the exact same page as the last one. We mainly are going to be using sine cosine and tangent okay we don't use these new three very often but we'll always have to remember Sokotoa okay so we're going to use that in our three examples here all right so it says solve the following right triangle all right so a couple things we need to do first before we start solving this okay first I'm going to label my triangle so here's angle a so across from it is little a angle b is at the top so little b is equal to 15 and angle C is across from little c. Okay, so this is how I solve right triangles when it says solve the following right triangle. I list my three angles with capital letters, and then I put my three sides with lowercase letters right next to it. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to list all of my knowns. Okay, I'm going to say, what do I know? Okay, so what do they give us? They give us angle A is 28 degrees. They tell us angle C is 90, so that's good. We're done there. And then they tell us little b is 15. All right, so that's all we know. They're always going to give you three of the six. There's three angles, three sides, so they're going to give you three of the six. You need to find the missing three. Okay, and that's what it means to solve a triangle. All right, so first things first. Let's figure out this missing angle. We know that the three angles of a triangle always add up to 180 degrees, and we know that we have a 90 and a 28. Okay, so it was 90 plus 28, it's 118, okay? So we have 118 of our needed 180. So 118, 180 minus 118 is, okay, so if you can't do that, I'll just do it here. 180 minus 118 gives us an angle of 62 degrees, okay? So our missing angle is 62 degrees, all right? So we should at least be able to do that, all right? So now we have four of our six necessary pieces that we're trying to look for. So now what we need is little a and we need little c. It does not matter which one you solve for first. You'll get the same answers. Okay, so this is the way I do it. All right, I'm going to circle the angle that we're going to use. You cannot use the 90. You have to use one of the two acute angles. And then you're going to label it based on which one you're trying to find. We're going to find a first. So across from our angle is our opposite. And you have to use the side that we know. So the, ne the, the side next to our angle is called the adjacent, okay? So if we think back here, you know, I write S-O-H-C-A-H-T-O-A, -H which trig function, okay, so remember we have the three trig functions. We have sine, we have cosine, and we have tangent. Which trig function uses opposite with adjacent? Okay, so hopefully you notice that that's tangent. So we're going to set it up tangent. So tangent of 20, maybe I should spell tangent correctly. All right, so tangent of 20 degrees is equal to opposite, which is A, over adjacent, which is 15. Opposite over adjacent, so A over 15. And then remember, put this over 1, and then we cross multiply. So A times 1 is A. Tan 28 times 15 is tan 28 times 15, okay? And then we basically use our calculator. So I'm going to type in tan of 28, tan of 28, close my parentheses, times 15, and that should give me my little a. So little a is 7.98. I'm going to round to two decimal places, 7.98. So a equals 7.98. What I do is I go back up to the top, and I put in 7.98. So notice I have five of my six that I need. Now I need little c. All right, so I can erase what I wrote here. Um, if you want to do that, you can too. Um, but now what we're going to do, okay, is now what we're going to do is we're going to find C. Okay, so across, now we're going to label it based on C. So across from our 90 is always the hypotenuse. And then once again, we still know B, so that's still our adjacent. So which trig function uses hypotenuse and adjacent? So not sine, so 
cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So we're going to do cosine of 28 to get the C. So cosine of 28 degrees is equal to adjacent, which is 15, over hypotenuse, which is C. And then put this over 1 and cross multiply. So we have 15 times 1 is 15, cosine of 28 times C. So we're cross multiplying diagonals. So cosine 28 times C. And then now we need C by itself, so this is a little different. So I need to divide by cosine of 28. Divide by cosine of 28. So C is equal to 15 divided by cosine of 28. So 15 divided by cosine of 28 degrees should give me my little C, which is 16.99. 16.99. Go back up to the top, fill it in. And there we have it. Now, make sure your hypotenuse is always your biggest side. Remember, the hypotenuse is bigger than the two legs. Well, so 17.9815, 16 16.99 is definitely bigger. So there we have it. We've solved the whole triangle using Sokotoa. All right, let's try one more. All right, so I'm going to label my sides here. Angle A, angle B, angle C. Little a, little b, little c. Let's label what we know. All right, we don't know angle A, we know angle B is 60 degrees, we know angle C is 90, and we know, so across from angle A is little a, so we know little a is 7. Okay, so let's figure out what we don't know. All right, so this is pretty easy to find A, 60 plus 90, 90 plus 60 is 150. We know all of them are 180, so minus the 150, we get 30 degrees. So this is a 30-69 triangle. Okay, so one of the one of the three we need to find is done. All right, now let's label the triangle. Okay, so we know across from angle C is little c, and we know across from angle B is little b. All right, so let's now let's figure out B first. Okay, so we're going to label our triangle based on B. So let's use our 60. B is the opposite. And we don't know the hypotenuse, but we know the adjacent because it's right next to the 60, so we know adjacent. So which trig function is opposite over adjacent? That should be tangent. So tan of 60 is equal to opposite, which is B, over adjacent, which is 7. And then put this over 1, cross multiply. We have B times 1 is B. Tan is 60 times 7 is tan 60 times 7. And that's just a calculator problem. So tan of 60 degrees times 7. Oops, not log of 7, just 7. Delete that. And enter 12.12. 12.12. So little b is equal to 12.12. 12.12. All right, and last but not least, let's set up the other one. So we still know the adjacent. We don't need the opposite anymore. We're not going to use that. Okay, we're still using our 60. So we know this the one we know is the adjacent. And then across from the 90 is always the hypotenuse. So we're going to do adjacent with hypotenuse, which happens to be cosine of 60, is equal to adjacent, which is 7, over hypotenuse, which is C. Put it over 1, cross multiply. 7 times 1 is 7. Cosine of 60 times C is cosine of 60 times C. Divide by cosine of 60. Divide by cosine of 60. C is equal to 7 divided by cosine of 60, which is 7 divided by cosine of 60. Close the parentheses, and you get 14. 14 is our correct answer. All right, so let's go back to the top, and C is 14. So notice our biggest angles across from the biggest side, middle angle across from the middle side, and the smallest angles across from the small side. That's what we want. All right, so that's example two. And last but not least, we're going to do a story problem with these, and then we're going to draw, have to draw a picture. All right, it says a parasailer is attached to a boat with a rope that is 72 feet long. Okay, so let's see here. We have, let's draw our boat. And we have this parasailer that is attached to, here's our parasailer, and it says that the it is 72 feet long. All right, and I am assuming, I'm going to assume, I know you can't assume always, but that the parasailer is 
straight up and down from the ground. And then hence we have this 90 degree triangle here. All right, so what, do we, what does it want? It says the angle of elevation from the boat, from the boat to the parasailer is 28 degrees. All right, so this angle from the boat to the parasailer is 28 degrees. And then it says estimate the parasailer's height above the boat. Okay, so how high is the, from the boat to the parasailer? So we're trying to find how high is the parasailer. So I'm going to call this side our x. I'll call that side our x. All right, and then we basically just have to set up our Sokotoa problem and see what we have. All right, so here's our important angle. Across from the important angle is the opposite. And across from the 90 is the hypotenuse. So which trig function, okay, so remember we have Sokotoa, S-O-H, C-A-H, T-O-A, uses opposite with hypotenuse. And hopefully you see that that would be sine. So sine of 28 is equal to opposite, which is x, over hypotenuse, which is 72. And then what we're going to do is we're going to cross multiply. So we have x times 1 is x, sine of 28 times 72. And that should give us our x value. So basically what we have to do is type that in our calculator. So sine of 28 times 72 should give us how high that parasailer is off the ground or off the water. 33.8 feet. 33.8 feet. So 33.8 feet. And there we have it. So he is 33.8 feet off of the water. And basically all we did was set up triangles and that's why triangles are important because you can get lengths and distances using Triangle. So I know construction workers and architects use trigonometry quite often in, when they're when they're trying to come up with rooms and heights and and building and building structures. So there you have it. There is section 9.1 part two. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a good night.